Now let's talk about how we make sulfonic esters or sulfonate esters from alcohols. The basic reaction type here is a substitution process. If we look at what's going on within the alcohol, for example, what appears to be happening is the substitution of an H, the hydroxyl H, in the starting alcohol for the sulfonyl group, for the SO2R group. So one way we could talk about this is that one electrophile, H+, is being substituted for by another, SO2R+. And I'm actually going to highlight that sulfonyl group in green just so that we can distinguish it a little bit more easily from the H in the starting alcohol. And we can see that that sulfonyl group comes along in a reagent in which we've connected it to a chlorine. And the key really to the chlorine is that it is acting as a leaving group here. The chlorine would like to depart with a pair of electrons, of course, and that makes the sulfonyl portion of this electrophilic. The nucleophile in this reaction is going to be the alcohol oxygen, and we're used to that kind of reactivity for alcohols at this point. Now one question we should ask at this point is, what happens to this hydrogen? Where does this hydrogen go? And that is where the reagent under the arrow, at least as we've drawn it here, comes into play, the pyridine reagent. Pyridine is a Bronsted base, and it's capable of deprotonating the hydroxyl hydrogen, especially after the oxygen has been used as a nucleophile and, for example, picked up formal positive charge. And so the byproduct of this reaction, and we'll look at the mechanistic details here in a second, is the conjugate acid of pyridine, which looks like this. And the other thing we haven't accounted for on the product side is the fate of the chlorine. And with chlorine acting as a leaving group, departing with a pair of electrons, that forms chloride. And so the salt pyridinium chloride is the byproduct of this reaction. So just to summarize the reaction again, we synthesize sulfonic or sulfonate esters from alcohols using sulfonyl chlorides. Notice that the reagent highlighted in green and black contains a sulfonyl group linked to chlorine, and the chlorine is a good leaving group, so we can think of the SCL bond as polarized toward chlorine with electron density on the chlorine, making this a sulfonyl chloride. It's kind of like a chloride salt with the sulfur positively charged and the chlorine negatively charged. It's a covalent molecule, but it's named almost like a chloride salt, the way we would, we would name it alkyl chloride. And the pyridine is very important as a Bronsted base. You'll also see substituted derivatives of pyridine used here, such as dimethylamino pyridine. This is um, four dimethylamino pyridine, just to show the structure of that really quickly. It's just pyridine substituted with the dimethyl amino group at the four position, and it looks like this. And this is kind of an amped up version of pyridine in that it contains an electron donating group linked to the pyridine ring. And so it's a stronger base than pyridine itself, for example. Now, in, in looking at the way electrons flow here just overall, it becomes apparent that this looks like a nucleophilic substitution happening at the sulfur atom with a nucleophile the alcohol oxygen coming in and displacing a leaving group, chloride. And so a plausible mechanism for this process starts there with nucleophilic attack of the alcohol oxygen on the sulfur center with displacement of chloride. And we can think about that as happening through an SN2 process. In the intermediate that follows this SN2 process, we've made the key oxygen-sulfur bond that shows up in the sulfonate ester, and we've also generated one of the byproducts, chloride anion. At this point in the mechanism, the pyridine enters the fray as a Bronsted base, deprotonating the oxygen atom to give the neutral product and the other byproduct of this reaction, the pyridinium chloride. And so from here, we can go right to the products. We've made the neutral sulfonate ester along with the pyridinium cation and the chloride anion in the previous step. And so the overall mechanism is an SN2 displacement of chloride by the alcohol followed by deprotonation at the alcohol oxygen to give the neutral sulfonate ester. Before we leave this slide, I did want to mention that there are other sources of electrophilic sulfonyl groups that are commonly used to form sulfonate esters in practice and they are conceptually analogous to sulfonyl chlorides, and so I wanted to mention them here. The most common class that's used are sulfonic anhydrides, which are anhydrides of the sulfonic acids, analogous to carboxylic acid anhydrides, which we'll see a little bit later in the course. Essentially, two equivalents of a sulfonic acid condense to form a molecule that has lost water from it. And they have the basic structure of a central oxygen atom linked to two 
sulfonyl groups. And so I'll draw out a full Lewis structure here just for the purposes of illustration. And 99 times out of 100, they are symmetrical. They're not mixed, but they have the same R prime group on each side. And notice that when we say they're anhydrides, we mean that it, you know, this looks like it came from the condensation of two sulfonic acid molecules. Rewind the video to remind yourself of the sulfonic acid structure with a loss of water. Now, typically the sulfonyl bit will have an abbreviation for it. It'll be one of those sulfonyl abbreviations that we saw previously. And so examples of these that are used are things like TF2O, triflic anhydride, with two triflil groups. The R prime groups are CF3. Uh, toxic anhydride, TS2O, Nosic anhydride, NS2O, and Mesic anhydride, MS2O, are commonly used. And the, the thing to notice about these is that they are conceptually analogous to the sulfonyl chlorides. Rather than using chloride as a leaving group, interestingly, these actually make use of a sulfonate leaving group within the reagent. So I'm going to do something similar to what we did with the sulfonyl chloride and highlight, first of all, one of the sulfonyl groups for symmetric anhydrides, which all of these are, it doesn't matter which one we think about, is the electrophilic bit. And if we look at what's remaining and we highlight that in black, we'll notice that this bit that's remaining is in fact a sulfonate group. And so the bit highlighted in black is a good leaving group, just like the chloride within a sulfonyl chloride. So sulfonic anhydrides can be used in lieu of sulfonyl chlorides in cases when the sulfonyl chloride is a little too nasty or the sulfonic anhydride is cheaper or what have you. Now, before we leave the formation of sulfonate esters from alcohols, I did want to highlight an interesting alternative mechanism that can sometimes occur in sulf sulfonic ester formation involving a different sequence of elementary steps with a double substitution going on. And the key to this alternative is to notice that pyridine is both a Bronsted base and a Lewis base. And as a Lewis base, as a nucleophile, pyridine has the potential to engage with the sulfonyl chloride before the alcohol, in essence, ever sees this reagent. And so an interesting alternative mechanism for this reaction starts not with the reaction between the alcohol and sulfonyl chloride, but with the reaction between the pyridine and the sulfonyl chloride. And we've, we've actually seen in some discussions of aromatic heterocycles that the pyridine nitrogen can be a pretty decent Lewis base, pretty decent nucleophile. It can be alkylated and it can be sulfonylated, in fact, through an SN2 type process at sulfur. So the electron flow is highly analogous to the last slide where we use the alcohol as nucleophile, but now it's the nitrogen acting as nucleophile. The product that we get is a pyridinium chloride with a sulfonyl group linked to the nitrogen. And actually the, the kind of paradoxical thing about this that's common actually in Lewis base catalysis situations is that now that the pyridine has coordinated, it has the potential to act as a leaving group, right? It's got positive charge. And so it kind of wants to depart with a pair of electrons if a nucleophile comes along and is able to attack the sulfur atom, say in an SN2 step. And so just like we saw in the previous slide, we have the electrophilic sulfur, the electrophilic sulfonyl group connected to a good leaving group here. And now the alcohol enters the picture and can displace the pyridine group in an SN2 step. And in this sense, it's catalysis, right? Because now we've gotten back the pyridine, we've gotten back our Lewis base. I'll draw that kind of in an off arrow here. And this can return and engage with another molecule of the sulfonyl chloride to kind of restart the mechanism, right? This can return and kind of start the catalytic cycle over. We've accomplished really the key bond formation between the alcohol, oxygen, and the sulfonyl sulfur. And I'll abbreviate the sulfonyl group here as SO2R prime, just to condense things a little bit. And now what makes this not really true catalysis is that a base needs to come along and deprotonate the oxygen. And this is typically done by pyridine itself. And so we actually do need to consume a full equivalent of pyridine in order to make this reaction work because pyridine serves as a base in this step, just like it did in the previous mechanism to give the neutral product. And so we still end up with the same byproducts. I'll go ahead and, and redraw those. The pyridinium cation and the chloride anion. 
it's just this is an interesting mechanistic alternative in that it highlights really Lewis base catalysis, catalysis by a Lewis base in which it's, we're setting up a good leaving group, we're setting up a, a better leaving group. You know, this step is probably reversible. It may not even be favored, but once that good leaving group is on there, SN2 attack in the next step is very rapid, and so catalysis occurs. Overall, though, you know, whatever the mechanism is, the overall process involves nucleophilic substitution at sulfur, where the leaving group is either chloride or, as we saw in the last slide, the sulfonic anhydrides, a sulfonate anion itself, and the nucleophile is the alcohol, which is eventually deprotonated by the base under the reaction conditions.